So before, after. Before, after. Look at that. Bonjour everybody, welcome back to my studio. Today I'm going to tell you all about my new favorite plugin that came out with DaVinci Resolve 20. I'm going to tell you what it is and how I personally like to use it in my professional color grading practice. Without further ado, let's dive in. To show you a little bit what I have going on here. So if I disable all these nodes, this is my log image. I'm transforming from DaVinci Wide Gamma to Rec 709 with a color space transform. You can copy these parameters if you need to. This is a look that I have designed, okay? And in node number three, I am going to apply my secret new plugin that I was talking to you about. And uh, I'm going to search for color tone diffuser, and I'm going to drag that in node number three. All right, what is this node all about? Well, let's have a look. Here we have a checkbox for presets, okay? Now I'm parked on clean slate, but I have all these other options, all right? We've got subtle, we've got teal soft, for example, okay? So that's before, that's after. We have a bunch of options right there. Personally, I believe that these options are quite aggressive, but you can play with the global blend slider right there and just use a fraction of the effect, okay? So here, if I go to 40% of the comfy couch effect, well, that's what it does, all right? So that is something that you can play with right off the bat, and that can be useful. Let's go back on the clean slate mode and let's detail a little bit what all of that is. Color space overrides here. You are going to uh, specify an input color space and an input gamma, all right? In my case, it's DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. But if you are working with S-Log3 or something else, you might want to change that in. Diffusion. You've got a resolution slider. When it's at the maximum, it's not doing anything. But if you pull that back, my image is gradually going to get softer. If I zoom in into my image, all right, and I go before, after, before, after, you see that I have added a significant amount of blur into my image, all right? But it's blurring my image in a nice organic way way. Um, so I would add just a little bit of it, okay? Before, after, before, after. Let's exaggerate it for YouTube a little bit. And my highlights are blooming a little bit, okay? And I'm also losing some sharpness in a nice organic way. I think it looks pretty good. You've got the diffusion checkbox that you can check in, all right? And when I take that in, I got some nice highlight blooming going on. It's looking pretty nice. Uh, I can increase the amount, increase the radius. All right, look at that. Before, after, before, after. Personally, I love that effect. Those two options, so resolution and diffusion, those two, options, I think you can very simply get a nice softening of your image. And if you add the right amount for your project and the creative intent, it can be really powerful. I'm such a big fan of that. Shadow soft clip. Well, let's turn it on. If I raise the threshold, you see that it's raising my blacks, basically. So let's turn on my waveform right there. It's raising my blacks. It's kind of compressing uh, my black point. And it's um, quite useful to create some interesting effects. Let's show you what it actually does to your signal. So here I have a grayscale ramp, all right? Right now, color tone diffuser isn't doing anything to 
my signal right there. But if I use the shadow soft clip, look at that, okay? So you see that I'm rolling off my blacks and shadows right there. And the softness slider helps me control that transition. If I want it softer or harsher. And that is exactly why when we play with these sliders, we have an effect on the blacks and shadows of our image. That is quite useful if you want to create a look, for example, you can um, slap that on and play with it. You can get some pretty interesting effects with that. Highlight soft clip. This is going to be a similar thing, but for your highlights. Let's turn that on. Look at the white in my image, the highlights. See that I can gently compress them, okay? Before, after, okay? Before, after. You can compress them with these sliders. So again, if I show you what it does to my signal. So look, if I enable it, look at that roll off that I'm certainly getting, all right? So that's the threshold. This is from where I'm going to grab my highlights. Uh, this is to grab the utmost highlights, and this is to go down and dig deeper into my image. And the softness slider is just going to play with the length of the shoulder, basically. So you can control how harsh that transition is. Again, quite useful to create a look, um, or even control the highlights in one of your shots, for example. That can be quite nice. Now let's move on to tone lights and increase it. When I increase it, my image is gradually getting softer, losing quite a bit of contrast, all right? You have bias red, green, so if you wanna push a certain color cast, like red, um, you know, green, magenta, blue, whatever. Personally, these bias sliders, I'm not a big fan of these, uh, but you can, you can get some quite interesting use for the tone lights, why not? And you can control it with the tone light fall off with the mask that you can preview, okay? So there it's affecting my entire image, but if I want just to affect, for example, the center of my image, all right? So the white part here is going to be what I'm affecting and the black part, what is not affected. So now see, I'm kind of affecting only the center of my image. So for certain scenes, for example, in a project, if you want more of a dreamy effect or something like that, kind of a halo type of thing, that can be useful. And then you've got image adjustments. Um, so you can control your exposure there, your contrast, your saturation. Personally speaking, I'm not gonna ever use these. Uh, I would rather use the basic controls that we've got in the primaries, for example, I'm not going to really touch these, but if you wanna play with these, then go on. Now let's have a look on another image, what we can do with that effect. So, um, all right, let's say that I want to, again, I wanna soften my image. Let's zoom in for YouTube so you can have a better look at what I'm doing here. And uh, I'm going to go into my diffusion Let's pull it back a bit, okay? So before, after. So I'm losing some sharpness into my overall image, but it's doing it in a nice organic way. You see how the little lights here, the light bulbs here are blooming a little bit um, with that operation. I'm such a fan of it. Then you've got diffusion. So again, like I said, let's, uh, okay, add a bit of it. Okay, so by default already, wow, look at that. Pretty cool. Uh, I can increase again the amount, the radius, all right. Uh, but look, I mean, so with three little sliders, 
which are resolution, then you've got diffusion, and then you can control the amount and radius. Wow, I mean, the texture that you can create with that, really, really good. And if I want to top it off with some grain, then I can add a node, all right, um, and uh, add a bit of film grain before, after, and it can be quite a good idea to balance the softening of an image with adding a bit of grain. That can usually produce some pretty cool results. So before, after, before, after. Look at that. There is also a checkbox right there, which allow you to make it 3D lock compatible. And if you tick that on, it's going to deactivate all the spatial effects. So all the uh, reduction of resolution, diffusion, all that, because it's based on the surrounding pixels in your image. But if you add some shadow soft clip, for example, it's going to um, take that into account to create a lot, for example. So if I want to raise my black point like so, well, it's going to remain in uh, the lot, okay? So to sum it up, I think this new Color Tone Diffuser OFX is brilliant. Personally speaking, I would use it for the diffusion characteristics, so resolution and diffusion. Also, for the shadow and highlight soft clip. Why not? Um, I think these controls are pretty nice. I hope that you enjoyed this new tutorial. Tell me what you thought about it down below in the comments. Tell me also for what application you are using it, um, because you can come up with some pretty interesting looks or feel with that new plugin. Also leave a like to the video, subscribe to the channel to not miss the future videos that I'm going to make. And uh, also subscribe to my Instagram account to see what kind of projects I'm working on as a professional colorist. And I will see you in the next video. Well, bye for now. Salut, prenez soin de vous.